hello uh, hi everyone so myself bigiranjan pati um, and uh, along with me jayanta patika uh, my colleague we both are working in ulfram uh, in technical consulting ulfram techno uh, i mean in the ulfram technical consulting group and today we are basically going to talk about notations creating uh custom notations and different type of objects in ulfram language uh, i hope you all are doing uh, great during this difficult time uh and with that we'll we'll uh, start the presentation okay so first is outline before we uh, go to notations and objects we'll briefly talk about evaluation model in mathematica and then that will lead us to uh, box language in in ulfram language or the box structure in ulfram language uh, using those we'll also talk about like make expression make boxes what are their uses and then using those we'll we'll create different type of notations uh, then we'll go to objects like creating different objects you might have already if you are already using ulfram language you you must have seen uh, things like date object uh, when or when you evaluate time series you get a time series object uh, so we'll we'll try to create our own objects and do some operations on that okay and finally if we get time we'll talk about a little bit about object oriented programming in in mathematica but that's an optional slide and if we don't get time we'll probably skip that part <clears throat> okay so oh yeah before i move i just want to make sure if everybody can hear me fine yeah we can hear you big you okay thank you so okay let's start with the evaluation model now so in all from language when we like type 20 by 30 so here i'm using the uh, writing assistant so that's why i'm getting like this or you uh, if we evaluate this we get like 2 by 3 or if it's like 20 by 30 if we uh, if we do it like this we'll still get 2 by 3 the the only difference is that uh, here you will see okay so what i did is i i press control shift e to see the internal form basically uh, that's called so expression in in mathematica also at the top menu uh, you can choose that as well in i think it's in let me show that to you it should be in evaluation so expression or yep this one inside cell so either uh, you select the cell and click on this option or you just press ctrl shift e then you'll be shown the actual internal expression here you can see there is something called fraction box so as we type in something in the front end it converts it to this box format basically or the box structure then we evaluate this it goes to the kernel it comes back as another box structure if i do this again here it comes as another fraction box basically mm -hmm. the difference here is that it's not a fraction box rather some uh, row box is like 20 then that slash 30 but mathematica knows how to interpret this uh, the return result should be a fraction box again then so what exactly is happening so there is front end and there is kernel now, when you type in 20 uh, divided over 30, what it, it converts to fraction box 20 comma 30, that's the box structure. That's called front end type setting. And then this, while, um, then it goes through kernel on type setting. Basically it parses this box structure, converts it to uh, some expression which kernel can understand that is divide 20 30 and then kernel computes it uh, as 2 by 3 it makes it converts it into the box structure again which is called kernel type setting and that's sent to the front end front end again renders it in the 
I mean, the things that we see basically on the, in the front end, these two by three thing. So this one we can term is rendering. Uh, this one we can say parsing, the kernel and type setting, and this one we can say formatting basically. So here it converts from box structure to the um, to the expression, the Wolfram language expression that's going to be evaluated by kernel that so that the kernel can understand what's going on. And then again, it uh, converts it back to the fraction box so the FE can render it. Okay, so that's all about the evaluation model. I mean, briefly, I explained it. So in this talk, like in the coming slides, we'll be talking about box structure mainly. And later on, we'll use that to create notices and all. Okay. So in the next slide, what are boxes in Mathematica? So boxes are basically 2D types setting structures um, that, that uh, represents everything, including like graphics object, dynamic object, control objects. Almost everything in Mathematica is um, is like uh, box structures. To see the underlying box structure, you use this one, control shift E, which I have already explained. For example, let's say, so this is the sim simplest expression that we can get, two plus two. And if we do control shift E, we basically see this one. And this is the underlying uh, box structure. Here you can see the row boxes and all. Um, then yeah, I, I got I got another row box because there was a comment basically. And then similarly, if they lit, they could be slightly involved, like one plus x plus x square, uh, that also represented is like this. So you can see it's similar to row, is just that we've added something called box row box, and the I mean the syntax is basically same. And if you take this and. you get the same structure. So yeah, the IP basically does this. There are some ad hoc rules, which are, so there are like uh, rules which are defined in the front end already, which are built into the FE and FE is able to render those. Similarly for a uh, graphics object, you can see this is an input object, but it, it should still be a box structure. Like it's in a box structure. That's not, a, not that much importance, but what I wanted to show is this plot thing. If I do a control shift E, you can see it's some graphics box, tag box, uh, then there is these, uh, these uh, internal things. But the important things is like the tag box and the graphics box. And inside every cell, if there is any 2D structures, then that will be contained in the box data. Uh, we'll talk about that in, a, in, in the coming slides. Uh, similarly with uh, with, with uh, graphics objects as well, it's the same. There will be some uh, graphics box, then disk box. To be honest, I, I didn't know that there is a disk box. I thought that, that should be some sort of other box structure, but I think it's a higher level box structure, which, which might be combination of some other box structures. Okay. Um, similarly, if we go for slider, uh, we'll see the same thing. Uh, for manipulate, uh, we'll see the same thing. I'm not going to uh, so I mean evaluate all this and so that, but yeah, you get the idea. Then here we saw that everything is boxes. Then uh, if we are, we are already using Wolfram language, we know that we are, we don't have to deal with these boxes. Um, there are built-in functions which actually creates these boxes. For example, if we evaluate style uh, and if I do a control T here, you'll see that they, they come style box. So these built-in functions create these box structures for us. So we don't have to do this. We just get to use those. These are uh, called box generators mm, internally. So, Similarly, there are other box generator like subscript, superscript, all those things, grid, uh, frame, like and you can you can name many of them. Like there are many more uh, we can use. So these all are called box generators. So because of this, we don't have to deal 
with boxes. Um, I mean, we do it very, we have to deal with them uh, rarely, but for notations and all those, if we want to do create like complex notations, we have to deal with the internal box toxics. Okay, so since we're talking about boxes, there are like, um, there are uh, many box structures in, in uh, Wolfram language, some of the notable ones I have uh, given here, like row boxes, I think I have already mentioned, subscript box, superscript, uh, uh, sub superscript, overscript, this, the name itself, uh, represent, I mean, defines what they are, fraction box also. Some of the things which are not like very intuitive, that's like, interpretation box uh, we'll talk about this in the next slide tag box one i missed here that is template box uh, which is a important one we use that a lot and dynamic box like if you have uh, wrapped with dynamic like dynamic a or something you'll get like dynamic boxes grid box is for grid okay so here are some examples like you can see this is like superscript box and when you wrap it with display from it will basically show how it will look like so you can see it gives me um subscript this one is superscript uh this one is fraction box which, which we saw in the first slide itself this is row boxes so basically comes in one row grid box you can see the syntax is same so it's not like something completely new uh, you can say it's the same thing, but it's it's just a grid box. Similarly, style box and all those. These are um, like the names itself uh, explains everything. So we don't have to worry about that a lot. The next one I will talk about is interpretation boxes. So interpretation boxes are kind of a box structure which, which helps in creating um, specially formatted output for any type of expressions. For example, here you see like there is interpretation box. I uh, This is what you will see visually. And this is what the, when you evaluate that, this thing will be interpreted as this. So this is the first argument. This is the second argument to the interpretation box. So I evaluated this, when I copy this, and I pasted it here. If I evaluate this, this comes as three. But, and if I do a control shift E, you can see that it's not simply my variable, it's wrapped with interpretation box. That's why it is interpreted as three. But if I just type in like my var, you will still see my var, it's, it's not the same. So these two are different. So if you want to use that, you have to copy it like that. Uh, because if you see here, it's just like a simple symbol. It's it's not wrapped with interpretation boxes. Okay. Then, yeah, you can see the standard form of this. So this is in display form, but if you see standard form, it, it will come uh, as three basically. Okay. So the high level function that uses this interpretation box is the function interpretation. You you might have used it already. So when you convert it to box structure, so from any Wolfram language expression, if you want to convert it to box structure, you can use two boxes, which will give the um, corresponding box structure. So here you can see interpretation uses interpretation box. So that's all about interpretation. It's mostly uh, helps in creating uh, spatially formatted output. Then there is another one called tag box. So this one helps in um, like SIP or I can say guide certain type of interpretation. What I mean by that is, for example, in inverse function f, you can see that it, it visually looks like this. Now, if I do a, if, if I want to see the box structure, you can see that it is wrapped with tag box. And there is a tag assigned to it that is inverse function. That's why it's coming like this. But let's say without the tag box, if I just type in like this, what will happen? It will come as one by F. So just to avoid, the, I mean, just to avoid this uh, 
scenario where uh, this tag box comes into picture. So in, in notations also, for example, let's say special functions. If, if we want to create some sort of special functions, uh, in those cases, these are handy. We'll actually talk about this. Uh, there is a, another section or another slide for this. Uh, so we'll talk briefly about those. Another use case of tag box is this, this I got directly from the documentation as well. Uh, so for example, here, you see like, visually there is no difference between these two, but if I do a standard form of this, I mean, uh, see the box structure of this, in standard form, you will see that there is a different tag uh, assigned to those uh, two expressions. Basically here, this one is mouse appearance tag link hit, and this one is mouse appearance tag arrow. So you can see how tag box, even though the uh, visually it looks same, uh, tag box helps us to distinguish between those two. Okay. So we'll move forward. Now there is another box uh, and that is kind of important that's called template box. Uh, you might have already seen this like binomial and K which comes in this form in, uh, in visually it looks like this in traditional form. If I copy this and paste it here and evaluate, uh, okay. You can see it, if it uh, interprets this thing as binomial n k. So this is done using uh, template boxes. So if I see, you can see this is template box. Uh, template box can have like tags. So this one is already built in this binomial, uh, binomial thing into this style sheet. So that's why we're already getting this, but we can define our own template boxes, own tags and, and uh, put that into style box. So for template box, there are two major components. One is display function. Another one is interpretation function. So what display function does is how will it, it render on the FE, like how visually it looks to the end user. That's what display function does. What interpretation function does is how the thing will get evaluated. Uh, that's what interpretation box does. Um, so here you can see template box A, B, uh, and this is my tag, basically my function, uh, some random tag I've given, then this should be my interpretation function. So what it will do is my function open bracket. Uh, then this will be a B because it's a row box, a comma B and then, uh, the close bracket. So this is how, uh, it will interpret and display function will be some, uh, in a comma b in open square close bracket open close square bracket so if you see this it looks like this um and you can see if i evaluate that it is interpreted as my function a and b so if you have some definition for that it will evaluate to that one now if you don't have an interpretation function it will automatically assume that this tag or the head of that uh, inter that uh, uh, box structure will be the tag basically. So here you can see, I don't have an interpretation box, right? Just like here, it's automatic. Even then, if I evaluate this, uh, copy this one and put it here, it will still say me my own function something. So if I change that to my function two or something, it will give my function to AP. Now, uh, similarly, we can, there are already built in template box structures like binomial, there are others as well. We can just use those um, to get the corresponding, uh, corresponding form in standard, uh, corresponding um, structure. Uh, we can see this uh, definition, the style definition for it. We just need to evaluate current value of uh, current value style definition of the binomial. You can see the uh, display function here. And then template boxes can be nested. You can put one template box uh, inside another. 
So here you can see we are using legendary P uh, inside a binomial. Then we can have dynamic template boxes. That means we can create pop-up menus and all. For example, here uh, I created a temp pop-up menu. Let's say I, I selected three. Then now if I evaluate that, it should give me three. So it interpreted as three, whichever value is selected. Uh, it interpreted. So we can build sliders. We can build all type of control objects. So this template box, along with make, make express and make boxes, will be used to define new notation that we will discuss in the uh, in the coming slides. Then, since we are talking a lot about make express and box and make boxes, uh, we'll talk about those a little. So make box is to construct boxes from. Uh, the corresponding expression like Wolfram language expression, we use make boxes. Uh, one of the difference that you'll notice that this one didn't evaluate. So basically it has a whole attribute. Uh, so it didn't evaluate the uh, expression, uh, rather it just converted to the box structure. Then to convert it back to the expression, uh, we can use make expression. This also has whole complete attribute. Then uh, there is two boxes. The difference between make box and two box is that two box, uh, I mean, the uh, argument gets evaluated first, then it goes to the two boxes. And then if you see here, you can see like, yeah, basically this is a graphics box and like it's, it's the actual plot and that gets converted to box structure. I'll just delete this. Uh, two, two expression is similar. It, it uh, takes any string uh, string expressions and con uh, or boxes as Wolfram language input and then converts it back to the actual expression. So for example, here I had generated the box structure of the plot. And if I uh, pass that to two expression, it converts it into uh, plot basically. Now, uh, we can create cell uh, using these things. For example, let's say manipulate, we convert it to a two box and then, <clears throat> then we wrap it with box data. If you remember, I told you that inside the cell, if we want to have like a 2D box structure, we wrap that with box data and I just print it. So this one will, this one printed a manipulate. If I just or two boxes or something, it, it won't work basically. Cell won't be able to interpret that. So we need to wrap it with box data. Okay. Now we'll move forward. <clears throat> so now we'll talk a little about uh, different forms of input and output. You might have seen in my previous slide that I'm using standard form, output form, input form, etc. So what standard form is, uh, in like, this is what we usually get in the FE, like the FE renders this, if we don't specify anything, it's the default one. So let's say we typed X square plus square root Y, this is what we'll get, oh, sorry, the first one. In input form is like, whatever we can type in the key, like using a keyboard, that's what the input form is. Uh, then output form is the same, it's just, uh, is, is output, like uh, they are basically one dimensional notation, they are not 2D, but standard form or, or traditional form, they are like 2D form basically. Now, full form is like the, is, is full form of this expression, which is basically sent to the uh, kernel. So the kernel interprets it like this. So x square is power uh, x comma two, then y square root of y is power y rational one uh, comma two. So that square is half basically, right? So it's uh, rational one comma two. Then we just add those uh, for that we got plus. So there are shortcuts for standard form, control shift 10, control shift L, I for input form. So now traditional form is like an approximation of the standard, uh, like approximation to what we see uh, traditionally like in scientific form uh, not scientific form i would say yeah like uh, 
for we can say like in, in mathematical notation yeah traditional mathematical notation so what's the difference the difference difference is that it's very hard to go back from traditional form to the original form it's like on there is no unambiguous way to go back so here i have given an example so here it's trying to uh, go back from the traditional form here you can see it, it interpreted f of six but here if you see it comes as 6f, which is not correct. So that's a disadvantage with uh, traditional form. There is no guarantee that if we pass in traditional form into uh, Wolfram language, it will be able to interpret that uh, without an, any ambiguity. So we need to be careful about that. Okay, so with this, we have covered a lot, like make box, uh, different type of box structures, how how we convert box from expression expression to boxes, then different types of input and output format. Now we'll be diving into notations. Okay, so <clears throat> for any uh, notation, we'd like to have the following properties. It should be evaluatable and it should be represented in, in a nicely formatted output, like the, the Output should be nicely formatted, basically. So now we'll we'll go through that, like how to create and all. So for example, let's take two plus two. So here plus is the operator, which has a built-in meaning associated with it, that is plus. So that's why when we evaluate two plus two, it converts to plus two comma two and it gets evaluated to four. However, there are many operators which are recognized by Wolfram language, but there is no built-in meaning associated to those. For example, circle plus, there is circle uh, times, circle minus, there are many more, which don't have any built-in meaning. You can see it just returns on evaluated. What we can do is we can give meaning to these notations. So here, for example, I, do, I added a down value. This, like if, it's like x um, circle plus y. What we do is we uh, uh, calculate the mod of x plus y basically. So if I evaluate this, now if I do two uh, circle plus three, I get one. Similarly, I can define for x circle times two, we get 10 uh, because it's two plus three, five multiplied by two, 10. Now, even though they don't have built-in meanings, they do have built-in uh, precedence. Uh, I have linked this page, uh, the documentation page, which lists all the precedence in their order. I mean, uh, I mean the operators in their precedence. So you can go through that and accordingly, you can use those uh, whenever you want. Okay, so this is about like, we take some, uh, undefined or unrecognized, I won't say unrecognized, but rather symbols that doesn't have meaning and we gave some meaning to it. Now, how can we format outputs? For example, uh, like we, some expressions we want to format it nicely. For example, let's say I have something like my plus X, Y. I want to format it like this. Uh, we can do that using the function format. So that's possible. For example, I want to represent something as matrix form. I, I, I can do that. The downside with using format is that if I copy this and pass it, I mean, if I evaluate this, uh, so it doesn't interpret this as my plus one X, Y. So basically this doesn't allow me to, um, to pass this particular, this particular expression into other functions. So that's a disadvantage. Uh, that's to, to get rid of that, we'll use something called uh, make expression. Sorry. Uh, we'll use uh, make expression and make boxes. So I have, if you remember, I had mentioned in the first slide that there is parsing, there is formatting. So first thing we'll do is formatting. 
for my plus, let's say I added a rule, attached a rule of up value to that. Uh, what I'm saying is if, if I get this in standard form, it should be formatted as this, which is like row box, uh, subs I, I'm using circle plus, then uh, in the subscript, there is N in standard form Y. So let, let me just evaluate that. So it'll be clear. So you can see A and B, then M plus N is basically this one that goes as subscript and then this uh, a and b this is nicely formatted so then what's the difference between format and this one and this if i copy this and uh, try to evaluate this this won't be interpreted as well as this won't be interpreted as uh, my plus but what we can do is we can add another rule to this that uh, using make expression whenever you get this and you evaluate this one this should be interpreted as this one uh, my plus, and I mean, basically this this uh, thing, and it, it will be interpreted, sorry, I probably need to evaluate this. You can see like it, it interpreted as this one. Now, an important difference between make boxes and format is that the format does not evaluate its argument. Uh, without evaluating, it's it basically just format the expression, uh, but the later, uh, evaluates the argument, so that's uh, you. That's kind of leaky. So you need to be careful while using format. Um, so that's that. That's how we can use make boxes and uh, make expression uh, to create a like fully interpretable uh, expression in in Wolfram language. We can also use make box and interpretation as you have seen like interpretation, uh, we can use that to create specially formatted uh, output. I haven't given the examples. I, I just added it like as an option, you can try that out yourself, uh, but this is doable. Okay. So now we'll talk about notation for special functions. What I wanted to uh, explain here is that, for example, let's say gamma x. In standard form, like if you evaluate this, like by default it's uh, showing me the standard form, or you can do a standard form on this. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't render as diff I mean differently. But if I evaluate, if I show the traditional form, you'll see that we get that. Uh, met, uh, nicely formatted mathematical notation. And you can get the box structure. Basically there is a template box, there is a uh, tag associated with the template box. Um, yeah, and there are like tag box, form box. I'm not sure why, there is, yeah, okay, it's traditional form basically, okay. So then you can get the, uh, just like binomial, you can get the style definition for gamma. It's, it's already built in. Now, what we'll see, like why I showed you this, we'll see next slide, that in, in traditional, sorry, in standard form, there was no uh, rendering, right? Like there was no uh, uh, sp special formatting in standard form, but we can actually add a um, formatting in standard form as well. That's what we're going to do here. So let's say we define a function called gamma appearance. We use template box. Uh, we give a tag my gamma display function will be this. So I'm using this uh, notation. And then uh, basically whatever we got in traditional form, we are trying to do that. And my interpretation will be like this. So we know that uh, like Wolfram language understand what is gamma square bracket, close bracket. We, we just need to define a format and it should be fine. So we defined this and then to add a value to gamma because it's built in function, we unprotect that. And then uh, we again protect it. Now, if we evaluate this, even in standard form, um, you can see that we get this nicely formatted output. Uh, so 
this thing can be copied and if i copy this paste this i add 2.3 you can see it gave me the same result so it's able to uh, take input and get the result it's, it's just works similar to this comma function note but the difference is if i don't copy this because if you see the internal structure it's a template box with tag my gamma and it has display function interpretation function and all but if i directly just type in uh, this using uh, writing assistance or something and then try to do this it doesn't interpret that as a gamma function that's where the tag becomes important that's that's why we talked about the tag box previously and this template box has some tag assigned to it so that's what uh, that's when it, this this becomes important now we can add uh, so okay we defined this but uh, what's the use like if it will just go away right we can we can have add input alias i mean we can add as an alias uh, this this gamma i mean this gamma appearance to uh, this tile sheet and and basically we can use this one as always this this is a part of notation package we'll we'll talk about this just after this slide so probably I'm, i will skip this one now so once you add this uh, then I can start typing like escape gamma uh, type set escape and this will automatically appear this thing. So that's what the input alias is for. There are other ways as well. You can use set option input alias then that uh, thing that that will also add that to the style set. If you want to add it permanently you can use set option front end comma and then that, that particular uh, formatting and that will add to the um, Add to the styles. Then there is the notation package. I'll, I'll briefly go through this because we're probably running out of time. So notation package, what it does is it basically uh, makes it easy for us. So if I evaluate notation package and uh, let's see, okay, I get this one. This Oops. Okay, anyway, this worked. Uh, I'll look into that. But okay, so here you can see if I uh, notation, what this does is basically make it, it creates the formatting as well as parsing. So here you can see uh, uh, here. So I, I already skipped a step, but that's fine. Here it's like for formatting, when we have this, uh, this uh, syntax will get circle plus X, Y, N. So if we do that and do this, you can see. So internally this uses make boxes, make expression, but for the end user is basically easier to do this rather than doing that complicated stuff. Like you define make boxes and all. Still, this you can see this one way arrow that basically says uh, when you have this, pass this as this. Or if you can define the reverse arrow as well, which is the formatting one. If you have this, uh, basically it will format as this one. But there is another one, uh, is the you can see like there are arrow both words so in that cases it, it takes care of formatting as well as passing which is make boxes as well as make express uh, you can remove if you want to remove some notation you can do that as well and uh, yeah like basically this can be used in this one as well if you have this formatting and parsing both you can use that as well Okay, so this this basically all we talked about noticing package takes care of that. It helps a lot for writing. Like if you are um, if you're writing some research paper or something, you need good notations. This makes it easy to write rather than going through that tedious process. You can just focus on uh, creating the notations. 
uh, then uh, this is just another example, uh, like A1, A2, A3, some matrix form. I am I'm converting this to this. You can see like um, when I evaluate this, it goes to this. If I copy this output format and see its full form, you will see this one, the interpreter form. And I can add an input LES and then uh, type escape, IJ escape, and it should give me the uh this format basically it will give me this i mean this and then you can basically fill the values that you want to and evaluate what the reason we want to use this it's it's very nice like, like, like if i mean if we have this in a resource paper or something it's very hard to know what this guy is talking about but uh i don't know not maybe this but let's say some quantum mechanics symbol or something, or maybe some, I don't know, special relativity, something we are, we are talking about and we have some special symbols. And if we uh, use the exact uh, symbol, like the mathematical notation, it will be easy to use. Uh, so that's what the advantage with this, or that's why we want to use notation packages. Uh, or if you have, Compatible with coding, you can always use make boxes and make expressions and create your own notation and etc. Okay, so with that, we we end notation. Okay, there are two other things. I just want to briefly cover those. I won't go through in detail, but there's another one called symbolize. That's that's a function in uh, notation package. So here you can see m m h is <clears throat> Sorry, so that's symbol, but then there is a subscript. Oh, this one is subscript, oh, or is it, is it L? Okay, something. So if I do a head of that, if I get the head of that, it's subscript. But what I can do is I can use symbolize. That's also a part of notation package. So you need to load the notation package. And if, if I evaluate that, and then I use this, it becomes a symbol. So what? It helps, it, it, it basically helps to use composite boxes as symbols. Uh, you can already see the benefits of it in, in like um, mathematical world or scientific world. Then there is another one called infix notation. Uh, these are directly borrowed from the guide page. Uh, you, you are already aware of the infix function in Mathematica, which basically adds this, uh, uh, like if we have f of a, b, c, and we want uh, this infix operator, it basically adds that. It's something similar to this. It basically, uh, we can have a uh, box structure which can be interpreted as, which, which can be used as an inf uh, infix operator. So here, if I say a, b, and this composite box structure, I interpret it as join, so it basically joined. So what it does is, is like here you can see if I'm, I'm checking the full form uh, by holding this and you can see that it it parts the input it basically it does finally the kernel does this join of a b c d so this is interpreted as join and then uh, it basically joins the list and gives me the output so that's the benefit with infix notation okay so that's all about uh, notation packages and i, I like briefly about notations as well, how to create notation and etc. Then, then we'll talk about objects. Since we have less time, we'll go through it quickly. You might have already heard about objects, uh, but with something added to it, like date object, time object. Uh, you can see date object is uh, formatted as this, time object is formatted as this, time series is formatted as this. You can see like this uh, nice little box, like this object, and you can uh, maximize it. See, I mean, uh, open the boxes and see some summaries uh, regarding this. Uh, these are all built in to Mathematica. Interpolation does the same. So the advantage with th these objects are they're nicely formatted. The the information is very 
I mean, presented in compact form as well. It contains a lot of information, but it's not at the same time. It's not like uh, very clouded, so that's a that's a benefit. Uh, it can contain large amount of data if we want to. That's also possible. We'll see. Uh, it can be used as input, so I can copy that data object and pass it to another function. Uh, so. Then the other one is if it is saved in a notebook, for example, let's say time series, I saved it uh, in a note. I mean, I evaluated that, saved it in a notebook. I don't have data now, but still I can pass that notebook to someone and somebody else can use that if, if we need to do that, that's also possible. So these are the major advantages with the objects in Mathematica. These are uh, called elite, uh, elite, elite forms in general, internally. Then what are the benefits with objects is that we can access information from these objects. For example, let's say time series, I constructed a time series. Now to get what are the information that I get, I can access this many information from uh, a time series object, like date, path, dates, you, if you see those. So these are all built in now, I'm not doing anything custom object, we'll see how to create our own. Uh, you can see like all this, we, we can basically do all these things. And as I mentioned, we can pass that as an argument to another function and, and, and evaluate that. Then there is similar to this, I have another example, linear uh, model fit and we get all the properties. There are so many, so I, I, I'm getting the short form of that. I think there are a lot many, 57 plus uh, seven, 64, so I have using short and you can get the uh, information regarding that. Now, for some of the objects, we can copy the box object. For example, date object. Um, this, and I say I copy this and say, I don't know, date value. And if I copy that one, give me a second, and I don't know, like day or week, something if we say, day name, it gives me Friday. So I pass this object uh, as an input to another function in Mathematica. But this is not the case for all the objects. We can't do that with all the objects. Uh, date object, time object, time series, temporal data, uh, uh, or objects along those lines, we can uh, use it like that. But for some of them, for example, interpolation, uh, list interpolation, sparse array, those we cannot copy and paste and pass it to another uh, function. What we can do is we can assign it to another function, for example, interpolation function, sorry, uh, to another variable. And once we get that, we can use that uh, and we can pass that to other function as well, but we can't just copy this and uh, use that. So yeah, th th that's, that's a major difference that I wanted to point out. This, how this is done, we'll, we'll talk about it in a, maybe in the next or in the coming slides. Uh, then we have, okay. Now, since we talked about uh, this objects, we'll talk how to create the, uh, create some custom objects. Now, one of the benefits, for example, let's say uh, I just evaluate this, we might not go through the code. Um, here we can see I evaluate a power, my power three, there is all this information, I can extract these, all the properties that I want, I can uh, get the information out of it. But the limitation is that it doesn't look good. Uh, like visually, it, it is not, uh, it's, it's not like attractive, then it doesn't allow me to do meaningful operation on, on this. Basically, if I do this, uh, it you can see like two identity, two squares, 
it's not able to interpret it properly. But if you see like built-in functions, we can do something like this. For example, around, if we uh, add to around, it, it is able to do some meaningful operation. So we'll, we'll see how to get around that issue. So uh, I defined another function. It's the same one. You can see there is like multiple, there is this identity square Q. What I did is I added a uh, formatting to this uh, with this panel and something. I think I added a panel. And then I added a, added a rule, an op value. Like if I am doing an addition, do this, like my power. First, I add those uh, two of these arguments and then uh, apply my power one to that. So we will minimize this code. Now, if you here see, oh, sorry, let's evaluate the code first. Now, you can see that it came in a nicely formatted uh, way. And then I can, even though it's nicely formatted, you can see I can get all the, I can do the same thing, like I can access the outputs and all. And then, uh, Let's say I do this, uh, I do this, y of square. Here you can see like, it doesn't do anything. Uh, Z of properties, it's, it's not doing. So node Z above doesn't give 10 to the power K and 20 to the power K basically. So, so if I do this, like uh, basically I showed you, in the code, I showed you this, right? Basically, when we do that, it it first uh, combine these two and then do my power of that. So that's what is happening here. So we can do some meaningful operations as well. Now, another one I want to do is I want to change the values. For example, x of square, I want to change some of the properties in situ. So that's also possible. That's what we'll see in the next slide is that uh, there is this formatted uh, object. Uh, so let me evaluate that. So here you can see I created an object. So what it contains, if you see object list, I get this basically contains this information like one to 20. And I'm, I'm formatting it in a nicely, I mean, formatting it is a grid with some coloring. So that's what my output looks like. What I can do is I can append uh, five to it. Like what this means is at position five, uh, add five, five times basically. So here you can see, uh, I mean, from here, the only difference you can see that there are uh, five square added five times. And if you see the actual list here also, there was only one five, I've added five, uh, I've added more fives into it. So we were able to um, change the data inside the object. So this this also we, we, we can do in Mathematica. That's, that's an advantage with this. We can add three at position, uh, then uh, we get, the similar thing, but that's the same thing. But then delete, uh, there is another operation. We can delete that. And then uh, we see that this five is gone basically. So these are the benefit with this. Like, so what we saw is we can create objects with nicely formatted output. Then we can uh, like add, we can do meaningful operations on that. We can change the, uh, elements in the object. So all these things we can do uh, and we can uh, format them as we want. Now there is another way we can actually format them nicely. I mean, there is another type of object which is very nice, which is built into Mathematica. For example, in temporal data, if you see, it comes in a very nicely formatted, I mean, object, I like, it's like a square box and then uh, it's wrapped with some sort of temporal data object. So this is called standard uh, summary boxes. And these also we can build and we can get uh, the same thing. Like the same way we get um, properties for other objects, we can do that for the summary boxes as well. 
Uh, we can also use these in other functions and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, these are all possible. Uh, so here we can see like a date list plot uh, of that temporal data. All these are possible. Can we create something similar in Mathematica? Yes, that's possible. Uh, it uses some of the internal functions. So what here I have done is I've created a, a packet, uh, like a, a packet object, uh, which sends some data to some, some machine and then I get all the information. So before going to this, I'll just evaluate this and show what it is. So here you can see like it created a packet object. It, it, it contains some of the information like which port it's using, what is the length of the data, what's the address, the packet size, what is the construction time, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, I can get information out of that, like my packet is, and I think it's property, let's see. Maybe property, let's see. Mm, okay, uh, we can see in the function what it is and then maybe we can use that. Okay, so basically that will give all the properties that we can access. And then uh, what I want to do is I want to pass this packet object into some other function and we get this output. So what I'm doing here is uh, uh, my, so I created a packet. So for that, I'm using this format value. It contains some box form, form summary data and et cetera, et cetera. It creates this nicely formatted uh, uh, thing for me. If you remember, I was saying if we can copy this thing and uh, put it into another argument for that, there is an option in this uh, thing, which is called interpretation true, if inter interpretable true. If we do that, basically we can copy this and uh, pass it to other function. It, it will contain all the information that's needed. And similarly, once we have this format, uh, uh, we have the nicely formatted value, we can add down values to it to get uh, the information that went. Here I'm just doing uh, for that particular uh, object. If I somebody specify type, just give me the type. If somebody asks for IP, gives, it gives me the IP. If, if it asks for port and give me that. So it's, it's basically, it's very simple. We just add a bunch of down values and it, it does that. Uh, it gives me all the properties to add uh, rules to it, like to pass it to uh, or give it meaningful operations. What we can do is we can add a value to that, uh, which I'm saying, if, if I have this packet data as head and I pass it to byte array to string, what it does, it, uh, it takes the data and converts it to uh, byte array to string. Uh, that's what it's uh, doing here. So that's all about uh, summary boxes and uh, honestly, we conclude everything here. I wanted to talk a little bit about object oriented because we're talking a lot about objects and all. So I have added some additional slides regarding object oriented programming uh, in Wolfram language. It's not like in detail, it's just briefly what we can do. These things are possible. And it's not that I'm recommending to use those because it's a symbolic paradigm. So it's up to the user and the use case. Uh, and if, if it is beneficial, we can use that, but that's an optional slide and you can go through that. And with this, I, I want to conclude this presentation and let's see if if we have any questions or anything. Mm. It, does, it does look like there are there was a steady, a steady discussion occurring in the chat field. Uh, it may be something that would follow up uh, better follow up in a, um, a follow up like email or discussion. Is there, uh, we have a question from Robert Nakbar about uploading the notebook and is there also a way, what's the best way for people to reach out to you if they have questions or wanna continue the discussion? Um, so, okay, like we can put that in the chat or 
Yeah, if you want to put your email addresses in the uh, Pathful chat field, the Pathful page should be available for 30 days uh, after the conclusion of the uh, conference. So if there is uh, material you want to reference from that chat, it should be available in there. And as you said, your notebook uh, has been updated to the Pathful page. So on the files tab of this presentation, you should see that notebook already uploaded. Okay, okay. All right. Um, well, I think as long as you throw your email addresses into that field, uh, we should be good to go. And uh, unless there's anything else, I thank you both very much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Okay.